Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review. I'm here today to talk to you about the movie and also the comic book of Batman The Long Halloween and how it is very similar to an, another movie that came out many years before the comic book was even written. And that is Batman Mask of Phantasm. I never understood why it's called that, or why the, the, the villain's called that. Like most, it looked like a phantom, but you know, whatever. Now, in comic books and pretty much any media, TV, movies, whatever, people steal all the time. Like, it happens, you know what I'm saying? Like, in comic books, somebody will see something, like a premise, it goes well with fans, and then they decide, hey, you know, we're gonna steal this and change it around. And because they change it around so much, you know, people just accept it for what it is, and they don't get sued for, like, copyright infringement and stuff like that. Now, Batman The Long Halloween comic book, that came out in 1996. It was created by Jeff Loeb, a man who is who has become very controversial with his anti-Asian comments and rhetoric over the years when he was working with Marvel on the TV series. Look it up. Now, Batman Mask of Phantasm, it came out in 1993, and it was created by Paul Dini, Bruce Timm, and Alan Burnett, and it was an animated movie based off of Batman the Animated Series. Sadly, it did not do well at the box office, and critics didn't really like it all that much, but, you know, of course, as fans, it became a cult classic because it is amazing. And honestly, I actually like it better than Batman The Long Halloween animated uh, movie. Now, when I was watching The Long Halloween movie, you know, a lot of people keep saying that, you know, it inspires so many other, like, Batman comic books and cartoon series and movies. Yeah, the Nolan movies, the last two movies he made, they piggyback off The Long Halloween. It's an adaption of that. And so as I'm watching this, I'm just like, wait a minute, this is very similar to Mask of the Phantasm. So I'm all like, why does the Long Halloween constantly get credit for being so inspirational and nobody even thinks about Mask of the Phantasm? And that just really bugged me because, you know, it's just like, because, you know, there are other comic books similar to it. You know, it's, it's the thing. Is Batman is looking for a villain. He spends the whole time trying to figure out who it is. And then somewhere towards the end, he figures it out. Lots of Batman comic books are like that. Under the Red Hood and stuff. But there's a very distinct reason why I feel Long Halloween and Mask of Phantasm are linked. Not necessarily linked, but like similar. Now, I truly believe that he saw the movie that Bruce Timm people made and decided to make it into like a comic book but change so much around that it wouldn't be like that similar to the movie but it is still similar nonetheless now the long halloween movie it's a pretty good movie like you know i like it i don't love it i'm not gonna buy it on dvd my only problems with the movie is I hate the animation like some of the animation is pretty good and it looks really nice but i don't like that weird flash type animation that so many cartoons are doing right now well mostly american cartoons that is i also like the fact that it kind of has that comic book look to it it's kind of cool but after a while you get kind of tired of it and i really don't like it the colors are nice I wish they would have added more music to it because there's a lot of like still quiet type moments that really need some music to kind of like oomph it up because it's kind of like, it kind of like, with there no music in the background, it's kind of like a silent still type music. It kind of like got me a little bored at times. So that was kind of a little ir irritating because it kind of like slowed it down. Also, I don't like the dude who's voicing Batman in this. I loved him in um, Batman Under the Red Hood when he played Red Hood. He was great in that. But Jason Ackles, like, his Batman voice is okay, but it's too similar to his Bruce Wayne voice. And his Bruce Wayne voice is, like, terrible. But for the most part, they're, they're the same voice. Like, he didn't try to change it up at all. And I hate when the actors don't try to change it up. All in all, I think that's pretty much the only problems I really had, like, with the movie. Now, they did change 
some elements from the comic book like the holiday killer is not who the first one was in the comics but you know it's a nice little twist all in all but this is how both movies and also the comic book are very similar to each other now remember phantasm came out in 93 the long halloween comic book came out in 96 and of course the animated movie of the long halloween just came out in 2001 well, last month and then the second part is going to come out this month so these are the similarities um, of both movies first things first Batman year one his origin both movies focus heavily on the origins of Batman in a certain distinct kind of way and Batman Mask of the Phantasm we get flashbacks of how Bruce Wayne started off becoming Batman. Him fighting in his street clothes to fight the thugs. Him seeing like the bats come out the cave. His love interest. And how he was torn between like wanting to be Batman and wanting to be a normal person. The police car chase when the police are chasing him. We also like, you know, see him don cape and cow and become the actual Batman. So Batman is in year two and he's still doing the Batman thing. Now, one problem I did have with this animation movie that I forgot to mention before. Now I remember what it is. I don't like seeing Batman get his butt kicked. Like I know he's still inexperienced. But, you know, he was whooping butt in year one, so you think he'll be a whole lot better now, you know? But in this animated movie, he constantly get his butt kicked by everybody. And I mean everybody. And what's even more embarrassing is that, okay, him and Catwoman are having like a chase. He's chasing Catwoman. And she's jumping off rooftops. She's jumping on um, the um, train, the, 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 those um, metro, um, what am I called? Um, them, them, them train systems that be like out in the city and stuff that be like near the um the skyscraper buildings and stuff she lands on all that stuff with ease where well, he's slipping and falling and tripping and stuff and that was just embarrassing like, he nearly killed himself and the thing is after year one him and catwoman became well bruce became batman and selena became catwoman around the same time he did his a little bit earlier than her so they had the same amount of time to practice yet she's skilled at it and he is not in the long halloween it piggybacks off of batman year one now batman year one was created by frank miller and it's its own separate continuity like his elseworld type thing but the yeah but long halloween does piggyback off of year one you know with the whole um um Carmine Falcone um, having those three scars on his face from Catwoman, from Gordon, Batman, and Harvey Dent wanting to take down the mob, from all these villains like popping up because they got inspired by Batman. The Joker is a major play now after the events of year one. However, there are some differences because it's not like a true direct sequel because you know Frank Miller wrote because like okay one Catwoman is black in year one and she's white in this one two Gordon is still with Barbara Keene and he is not with Essence and she's not even mentioned at all in the long Halloween at least the animated movie that is Another similarity is Bruce Wayne's love interest. He is unable to mm, seal the deal, if you will. In Mask of Phantasm, it is Andrea Bomar. In Long Halloween, it's Selena Kyle. There are just too many complications that are causing both him and his love interest not to, like, you know, like I said, seal the deal, become a couple, that type of thing. And it's to the point where both women end up leaving him. Well, at least in the animated movie, Selena leaves, you know, Bruce and stuff. And doesn't want to start a relationship with him, even though he wants to start one with her. 
Now, Andrea Bomar, she knows that her and Bruce, see their lives are two completely different things. Same thing with Selena, because both of them are villains and he's the hero. They both know that they're not going to be able to coexist, you know, because he's always going to fight for justice and they always want to do villainous type things. Also, both ladies find out Bruce's identity in both movies in a very odd and kind of way. Like in Mask of the Phantasm, Bruce is standing near the grave of Bruce Wayne's parents. And Andrea sees that and just assumes that, oh, if he's at the grave site of Martha and Thomas Wayne, then he must be Bruce Wayne. And Catwoman. Man, I don't know how she figured it out in the animated movie. There were no hints, no clues, no, like, absolutely nothing. They did not explain that whatsoever. I hope they explain it in part two. But, you know, I, I just don't, I just don't know how she figured it out. Because I never read the comic book. Speaking of Bruce or Batman at the gravesite, yeah. There is an image of the long Halloween in the comic book, or at least a comic book cover, where Batman is, well, standing in front of his gravesite of both his parents. And the gravesite looks very similar to the scene from Batman Mask of Phantasm. The third similarity, the mob. The mob plays a central point in both these movies in the comic book. In... The long Halloween, like I said before, it piggybacks off of year one. In year one, where the mob were the central villains in that comic book, it was Bruce Wayne and Batman going up against the mob and all these corrupt officials and stuff. And in the long Halloween, it is the Falcone family, the um, Russians. Somebody is knocking off the Falcones and nobody knows who it is batman suspects that like it could be the joker it could be one um carmine falcon knocking off some of his relatives um he thinks at one point it's the holiday okay the killer is called the holiday killer and at one point he thinks it's calendar man because every time this person kills one of the falcons they leave behind an artifact for a certain holiday which is why it's called the holiday killer. They only kill on certain days, starting with Halloween and Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. And Mask of the Phantasm, somebody is knocking off all of these big time mob gangster bosses. Batman is spending the entire movie trying to figure out who it is. And he's having an extremely hard time trying to keep these people safe and trying to figure out who it is. And you know, that was really interesting because in Batman anime series, it never really focused on the mob that much. It only focused on super villains. So that was a nice little touch for them to do, to focus on the mob. So he's trying to figure out who, cause the, all these mob bosses, they were all in a gang together. They all had ties. And he's trying to like put the clues together to figure out how they're all connected and who might be the killer. The next similarity is the red herring of the killer. Both movies have a couple of red herrings. In the Long Halloween comic book, it was well. Also, okay, it was believed that Harvey Dent might be one, uh, might be the holiday killer, because the comic book is heavily trying to like put you in that direction, because he is trying his best to stop the mob, and he really has it out for the Falcone family. You know, because he just wants to make Gotham a safer place. And to make it a safer place is to take out the head of, like, the organized crime and the main number one mob family in Gotham City. However, Batman suspects that the killer might be Calendar Man only because this killer is only killing on holidays. But, 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 Calendar Man is killed in the long Halloween comic book. So it couldn't be him. So that was a huge misdirection. Now, in the long Halloween animated movie, on the other hand, it's a little different. 
And this calendar man is suspected to probably be like the killer, but he's locked up in Arkham and he survives. He might die in part two, but in part one, he is very much alive. Then it is also suspected that it might be Harvey Dent, but Batman doesn't want to go down that avenue. So then he starts to suspect that it might be Alberto Falcone, who is the son of Carmine Falcone. And so he questions him and he gives some pretty good facts, but they're all false. Um, Alberto tells him, you know, it's not him and all this other stuff. And he sounds pretty convincing. And then he is murdered by the holiday killer. Now, okay. In this animated movie, I'm pretty sure. Okay. In the, okay, in the long Halloween, there are two holiday killers. In the comic book, the very first one was Alberto Falcone. But, you know, in the anime movie, he dies. And then the second one is the second main one who's going to be in the comic book and in the movie. And that is Gilda Dent, Harvey Dent's wife. See, because Harvey is constantly going out at night and trying to stop the mob, he has no time to spend time with her at home and she is lonely and she's having trouble trying to make a baby so she's very depressed she's not going to work she was also a lawyer and it's just like she's just she's she thinks by killing off harvey's like enemies that he's trying to arrest and everything then he'll be able to spend more time with her now in the animated movie they did not reveal who the holiday killer is but it's, I'm pretty certain it's Harvey Dent is the first holiday killer. Um, because it, it looks like him around the eyes and stuff like that. Now in the comic books, he turns into Two-Face. And in this movie, in the second one, he will turn into Two-Face as well. Now Two-Face was killing people in the comic books, but he still wasn't the holiday killer per se. Now, in Mask of the Phantasm, it is believed to be Arthur Reeves. I forget exactly what he does in that movie. I think he's the district DA. Um, and he's up for re-election. And so he blackmailed Andrea's father. And then when he wouldn't give him the money, he sent the mob after him. Because he owed the mob tons and tons and tons of money. So it was first suspected to be him, but then the Joker attacks him with his laughing gas type stuff. The second person who Batman assumes is the killer is Carl um, Beaumont. He is the father of Andrea. Batman believes that he's knocking off all his old crime boss buddies because he owed them money and they would not stop pursuing him so to make them make him stop going after him and his daughter batman believed he was knocking off crime bosses but it wasn't him either another big 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 similarity is the joker he shows up in both the long halloween and in mask of phantasm in mask of phantasm it is revealed that the Joker will used to be a, just a common henchman thug working for those mob bosses I told you about. And they sent him after Carl and Andrea. He ends up killing Carl. And so Joker knows that all those mob bosses are getting taken down. And he's going to be next. And he suspects who he knows who the killer is. He figures it out before Batman ever does. And so he's constantly like, he takes out one of the other mob bosses himself, cause you know, he's a joker. And he takes out the other dude um, I told you about named Arthur. Now in the long Halloween, the joker is mainly just jealous. See this holiday killer is killing people pretty interesting to the point where joker feels like holiday killer is number one and he's number two. So he gets jealous and he decides, you know what? He is the main like super villain of Gotham and he wants his crown back. So he starts to suspect certain people who might be the holiday killer. He suspects that it might be Harvey Dent. 
then he suspects that um it might be somebody who's gonna be at the new year's like eve like ball drop so he decides to gas like the entire city and stuff so he figures he has like a pretty good chance of like getting the killer and stuff in both movies when joker trying to kill both the holiday and phantasm killer he does it via aircraft The phantasm he's trying to blow up the phantasm another similarity is when the mob bosses decide to hire a super villain now in mask of phantasm um valesta the weasel he decides to hire the joker and the joker he's just kind of like he's not a thug for hire no more he's a whole lot better than him so he gets pissed and he ends up like gassing um the mob boss dude and so yeah now in the long halloween carmine falcone you know he sees that batman is unable to stop this like holiday killer and he knows at some point he's gonna be next so he decides to recruit batman's entire rose gallery to stop this person a tiny little similarity is that alfred see in Batman Mask of Phantasm, Bruce and Alfred get kind of into like a tiny bit of an argument where pretty much where um, they just have like a little tiff and everything, which is very uncommon because in Batman the anime series, Alfred was mostly the whole yes, Master Bruce and this and that. He pretty much did whatever he was told. He never like, you know, got on to him about anything. So that was kind of like unusual to see in this movie where he had to get him like a stern light, like, like, you know, talking to him and stuff and tell him that, you know, basically it's kind of like the whole, um, you might be the Batman, but Bruce Wayne, Bruce Wayne is like the person and you should have like a love life. Now in Long Halloween, Alfred gets on to him also, this time it's differently. This time it's mostly like the Falcons want him to go to some kind of banquet thing. Batman doesn't want to go because he's not into like hanging out with like gangsters and thugs and Alfred pretty much tells him that you know your father helped build the bank like some part of some type of organization some kind of fundraiser thing with the mob and you know you should attend because you know it's something your father did and blah blah stuff like that. Another similarity is the female villains are helping Batman figure something out about like you know solving this case. In Long Halloween, Catwoman leads Batman to one of Falcone's warehouses where he has millions and millions of dollars of cash, and she suggests that they burn it. In Mask of Phantasm, Phantasm, she leads Bruce to like you know start investigating the mob and see how what ties they have to Arthur Reese and what ties they have to the Joker because he didn't even know the Joker was that thug until he looked at the picture of him and stuff. And then he realized that Andrea's dad was into some kind of like dirty business. Now, last but not least, the killer. The killer is the main point that makes these two things similar. And that is, it's a female killer. People assume that it was a male, but it was a female. Now, I already told you that the second holiday killer was Gilda Dent. Now, in Mask of the Phantasm. That killer was Andrea Beaumont. See, when the mob came after her and her dad, she had to flee along with her dad to like another country and hide out for many, many years, which caused her and Bruce to break up. It broke both their hearts and she had to lie to him, telling her that, you know, she just didn't want to be with him no more. That what made him decide, okay, now it is time to be the Batman because now I don't have anything else holding me back. That broke her heart so much that she wanted revenge. So she decided to dress up as like this phantasm, like ghoul, phantom type thing and just start taking out those mob bosses that caused her and Bruce not to be together. And, you know, that like I feel is the biggest similarity to like both those two movies is the female killer and their reasons for revenge because it all had to do with like love so yeah 
So people can keep saying that the long Halloween is inspiration and all that. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. When Jeff Loeb like took um certain elements from Mask of the Phantasm, he did change it around to change things that won't be too similar, but it is still similar. Because you know, one has two killers, the other one only has one. And you know, like I said before, it's a really interesting tale of Batman not being able to solve who this killer is. Um, but I just feel like Mask of Phantasm is a bit better. It's more condensed. It's not as long. There's not a plethora of like super villains cluttering up like the comic book and stuff. And I just feel like it's just like, you know, the better movie and stuff. Alrighty. Well, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.